I'm Julie Cohn. I'm going to share with you about an amazing journey I've been on to heal from breast cancer. I've been inspired by the words of Lao Tzu, poet and philosopher of ancient China. Without ever going out the door, one can know the whole world. For many years I've been painting, ever since I was a child, painting and drawing. And it was important for me to replicate what was in front of me. After I started moving through some very difficult life journeys, I started realizing I wanted to go somewhere else with my work and to dig into a deeper place of intuition, subconscious. I went to an art fair and I found this little black book. I know that this process, developing about 60 paintings in this little book, had a lot to do with my healing. I deliberately didn't let my judging mind interfere with any of these paintings. I just went full speed ahead creating representational and abstract paintings. And then I'd ask each one, hmm, what does this mean? As I was asking, a title would come to me. I call this first painting Perfectly Imperfect. One breast and the second breast. I thought it was quite appropriate for the beginning of my healing journey. I'm going to flip through here and find some key paintings to share with you. The ones that I think best represent my healing path. This particular piece is called Outside the Box. Now I had decided to work with conventional and unconventional doctors, and this is a validation that my going outside the box was a good thing. The title of this one is Jerusalem. Whether it has to do with my own healing or not, it does have to do with the greater world healing. The feeling of the words on top could be Arabic, could be Hebrew. What came through is my prayer for peace between Palestinians and Israelis. Now this one is about a foot bath. Foot baths are for taking out all the toxins. And it looked horrible. It was muddy, all these toxins were coming up, they were rising, and hence the title, Rising to the Surface. I was very relieved to find out that this is the way detox baths are supposed to look. In the clinic where I was having treatment, one of the nurses named Hunter went nuts over this calm blue scene. He really enjoyed hunting and imagined himself in the early morning hours with this kind of a landscape. So I named it after him, Hunter's Morning. Believe me, when I started this one, I had no idea it would become like this. I started using my brush, like so, with different colors. And all these little bumps on there reminded me of little dwellings or huts or igloos. And then I realized, well, why not thread them together? So I put little fences coming all the way through, and I thought, well, what would a village be like without people? So I call this one uh, Threading Villages. Now I was dealing with a lot of decision making, and I uh, really uh, needed to calm myself down as I was trying to make these decisions. So this one, Horizontal Mind, was really helpful. It helped me to really get centered. Now there were a lot of times when I was feeling like my body was full of thorns. Decisions regarding surgery, medications, treatments were really hard to make. So when I was ready to paint light through thorns, I was feeling the frustration of not knowing if I was going to die soon or live a long life. 
or how much control would I have over my longevity? That question is still part of anyone's life, but even with the dark thorns, this one does have a feeling of hope in it. After that tough period, I gave myself a little present. This is called Purple Heart. I felt like a warrior. And even though I don't like war or battles, so much decision making was really wearing me down. This heart was a gift to myself to reward all of my diligence for coming to an understanding of my core beliefs and trusting my own intuition in general and regarding my course of healing. This next one here is so much about accepting that there are no perfect steps to healing from a life-threatening illness. Each individual takes his or her right steps. I call this warp or woof. I watched many videos and I read many books about alternative approaches to healing from cancer. And I talked with so many conventional and non-conventional doctors. It was crazy. There is so much to learn. But this painting is definitely holding it all together for me in one mesh. In a way, it's saying that all is okay. And we don't have to have the answers necessarily right away. This one definitely made me feel better. I was having a really hard day. The sun never goes away. Because even when you don't see it, it's still there. Such beauty in gray and taupe. I started using paint really thickly. I really hadn't used it like this at all before. I like applying watercolor both transparently and opaquely. All these interesting, beautiful colors started to emerge out of the grays. I realized I needed to get used to the grays, to get used to the beautiful semi-neutral tones, and to just live in that. Again, confirming that not having all the answers right away is okay. One of the modalities I worked with during my healing was biophoton therapy. It helped me to reconfirm that my cancer wasn't spreading. I entitled this one Icelandic Sun, as my biophoton practitioner was from Iceland. Slaying the dragons. During my healing process, the dragons that were really strong in my life, I knew I had to slay. I wanted to become more energized, a more joyous person. So slaying the dragons has to do with how I relate to the world and the way I take care of myself and show kindness even to those who don't trust my decisions about healing. And this one here is called Moving Toward a Decision. I use the side of my brush, it looks like the end of my hand, like this. And I didn't know what would happen, but they all look like people. They actually could be the different people in my life, my family, friends, even doctors. They're all helping me to move toward a decision. Great team of people. Mm, this one here, a simple hill to climb. This major decision was regarding having surgery on my breast. The reason I call it a simple hill to climb is because I wanted to tell myself that I don't always need to make a mountain out of everything. I can take it one step at a time and think of every day as a simple hill. I will get to where I need to go and the decision will be mine not a decision pressured by others. This one feels very fiery. What came out of the fire were these beautiful egrets in white that are so delicate and so graceful. It was the perfect metaphor for what I was going through. 
and a reminder that I was really moving through this illness to a very healing place and uh, that it was being done gracefully. I call it Egret's Walk. Blossoming Butterfly. Well, one of my friends told me that I really was a butterfly who had not yet blossomed. She was so right. Even though I'm in midlife, I still feel it's okay to be a caterpillar, to be blossoming at this stage of my life. And now I do feel like a butterfly in most respects, but not in all things. The caterpillar is always a part of me too. I am always a beginner in some aspect of my life. Here the butterfly is speaking to me, really thick paint beckoning me to fully blossom and most importantly, to be myself. Hmm. This one's kind of foreboding. What's going on in this picture? Well, it felt like a bat, like clouds moving in. It's called Winged Creature Looming. I was on the edge of deciding whether I felt the need to have a small tumor out. And after seven months of working with a naturopathic doctor and traditional doctors, I decided to have the surgery. The growth had stayed the same, but because it didn't shrink, I was a little concerned. And finally, I decided to have it taken out. So just before I had the lump taken out, I painted this one called Victory by Another Path. Not the path I was expecting. The following few paintings were helping me to accept this decision. Purification ceremony. Purifying my breasts. Feels like fire, cleansing. And another one that has to do with upcoming surgery. Up and out. So now I'm moving toward my surgery with a positive feeling versus a negative one. Very joyous, uplifting colors. Once upon a time, I told myself that I would look back at some point and say that. Once upon a time, a long time ago, this happened to me. I chose not to have two surgeries, even though I did have that first one. And I decided not to have radiation on my breast. It's already been over three years and I'm cancer free. The day of surgery, I had to wait for four hours in a very small room. And during those four hours, I made quite a few paintings. This one's called Winged Victory. Beautiful ride on the sea of consciousness. I don't know, it doesn't look quite well. It may be beautiful, but it doesn't look like an easy ride. So I think I was scared. I was very concerned about the surgery. This next one. I kind of go back and forth, scared, and then into myself. It's called my sanctuary. I get the feeling of being protected here and being with the earth. The last painting I painted just before surgery is called cornucopia, which means abundance and life-giving. I needed to go outside the conventional doctor realm and have some blood work done. Brightest star is what this is called. And this is the first painting I made about my blood cells. My finger was pricked and then we looked under a microscope to see what was going on. My white and red blood cells showed that I had a lot of congestion in my lymph glands and breast area that could be contributing to the cancer. These blood samples helped me to see which nutritional path I should go on to clear the congestion and reduce the excess of acid in my system. In these next two paintings, I wanted to express my desire to shift my red blood cells. The first of the two I call reorganization. In this one, the blood looks murky. Many of my blood cells were not separate. 
They blended together and overlapped, and many were not round. Healthy red blood cells are a symbol of healthy mind and spirit, as well as body. If they are not round and separate from each other, the interpretation is that I am not able to clearly define where I end and others start. My red blood cells were yet another symbol to let me know I had more work to do so I could keep my individuality and joy and still appreciate others, even if they were insistent about me doing what they wanted and being like them. I have heard that breast cancer is about being the pleaser. I needed to learn to set my boundaries, learn to say no in a nice way, in an appropriate way, and separate circles is a metaphor, not just for my body, but for my entire way of being in life. I love this next one, which I call cellular poodle walk. I was too dependent on what other people thought of me. This is the one with healthy cells and represents how I am now. Much better at understanding my own needs and my relationship to others. All the cells are round and just touching the others, not overlapping. Through painting, I created this vision for myself. And through nutrition and behavior, I have achieved a healthier red cell configuration in my body with much less acid and congestion. Wounded by words is what I call this. Some of my friends and family didn't know how to stop telling me that I would die from cancer if I didn't follow their advice. And at some point, I just had to say, I know you love me, thank you very much, but I need to do this my way. My therapist suggested that I write down my own declaration of independence. What a great idea. I sent this in the form of an email to my friends and family not singling out anybody. I clarified to them that I really appreciated them but needed to be respected for my own choices about my health. We worked it out and are doing great now. We are now separate circles. So now we come to a painting called I Love My Family. Whether it be family or friends, we are all individuals. We get to choose the way we live or die. That's just the way it is. I love them all and I know that they care about me. I just need to do things my way for my body. What this is about is exuberant, unbridled passion. This may be some kind of Mayan figure on the right. It's very accepting and grounding as the joyous horse moves forward with her life. And here is my final image, a flower, which seems to be an appropriate ending for the book. Even though I thought I might have some cancer in my body at that time, I knew I was on my way to fully healing. I had worked through a lot of psychological and nutritional issues. This is called Flower and the Light Within. And amazingly enough, it was a portent for a painting to come called No More Prisons, which shows my full emergence out of my own prison as a flower in full bloom. I call this multiple panel painting, No More Prisons. I can create my own prison, or I can choose to move ahead in my life with strength, perseverance, and faith. And when I wake up in the morning and it's a difficult day, can feel like everything is dark. I know that there's light and joy waiting for me.
It's always present, even in the darkness. Thank you.